I do not like making videos like this. In fact, that's why I put this video off for so long and even considered not making this video. But our channel is about bringing you honest reviews, so I thought I had to share with you my experience at the Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach and why I checked out after only two hours. First, let me say I realize that this is not the fairest review, so I'm not gonna follow the typical format that I follow since I was only there for a few hours. I'm just gonna share my first impressions, some of the pros and cons, and really why I decided to leave. First thing you should know is that there are two Grand Fiesta Americanas located in the hotel zone in Cancun. There's Condesa and Coral Beach. So I'm talking specifically about the Coral Beach location. Now I picked this resort because of its location. It's located in Punta Cancun, which is at the end of the hotel zone. And this area is known for its beautiful blue turquoise waters. It's supposed to have less seaweed than a lot of the other resorts, especially during the summer. That's one of the reasons why I ended up leaving this resort was because of the location and the beach. So let's start with that first. Now, since it's located in this little corner area of the peninsula, immediately I felt very claustrophobic at this resort. And the beach area was small and not very wide as well, so it felt like people were on top of each other. And that's only because everyone had to migrate to one small area of the beach that was semi-clean because the other area was completely brown and full of seaweed which of course is not the resort's fault at all. But another weird feeling that I was getting from this resort was a lack of security. And I'm a person that goes off my gut and I just did not feel secure here. But there were lots of security guards everywhere, right? When you walk in over on the beach. So the resort was doing their part. There was just something that I was feeling about the location in particular. But I still wanted to give the resort a chance because sometimes your first impressions are not always correct. And our check-in was amazing. We had already met so many amazing workers. We hadn't even seen our room yet or had any food or anything. So we decided to sit down and have a meal. We decided to have lunch at their restaurant that's right on the water. It's their seafood restaurant. And unfortunately, it wasn't the best experience either. Now again, the staff was very friendly and amazing, but they were understaffed here. It really did take a long time for everything to get to us which is not the biggest deal in the world because that's happened to me at all different types of all-inclusives, but the food was not great either. But this is a great time to talk about the price of this resort because it will help you to better understand the mindset I'm coming from. So we only had one night and two days to experience a different resort, and the goal was to find a family-friendly, all-inclusive resort that I can recommend other than the Grand at Moon Palace. Now my hope was to review a more budget-friendly, all-inclusive family resort like the Ryu but they don't book for just one night. So we thought this one would be great because of its price point, and that way I could compare it to the Grand at Moon Palace, which I've done many videos on. So for one night for two people, we paid almost $600. And I realized for one night, you will never get the best deal. The longer that you stay someplace, the better deal that you can get. But on average, the price per night compares to that of the Grand at Moon Palace. So I was hoping to do a comparison video of the two in hopes to have another recommendation for people for a family-friendly all-inclusive resort in Cancun, but the two do not even compare. But I still wanted to give this resort a chance. So after lunch, we walked around the resort quite a bit. We were able to go see the buffet, so if you didn't want to eat outside, you could have eaten inside at the buffet, which looked, again, just kind of average. We went to the coffee shop and had some ice cream and then checked out the lobby bar as well. The lobby area was very dark as well, and I didn't really feel like I was in a tropical setting. Usually, I love when you're walking into the lobbies and they're open air, and you can kind of feel that tropical feeling. This felt more like an American resort, which is probably why it's called Fiesta Americana. We actually met quite a few people who were loving this resort and having an amazing time. In fact, we interviewed some of them, so towards the end of the video, I'm going to show you that. So one amazing experience we had at this resort, besides the really friendly employees and customer service, was our room. They actually gave us a free upgrade and our room was amazing, so let's go check that out. This is definitely one of the biggest rooms I've ever seen at any resort. And if I was paying $600 a night for this room, I could definitely see the value. However, this was not the room that we were originally paying for, so I was absolutely thrilled that they gave us this upgrade for free. They probably did see that we were paying probably an astronomical price per night, and this room was open, so it was very much appreciated. We did not take this for granted that we got this amazing room. And this bathroom is huge. I could not believe how huge the bathroom was. And everything was nice and light and bright, even though it was an older resort. 
This big, beautiful room was another great reminder that everyone has different priorities when they are looking for a resort. And some people, the room is number one. For me, that's kind of last on the list because I don't spend a lot of time in the room. So the room may be big and beautiful, but if I don't like the resort, it's not going to make up for it. And we also had an insanely huge balcony that basically had views of the entire resort. But even despite this beautiful upgrade they gave us, there was just something about the resort that was not sitting well with me. And I think I narrowed it down to two major factors. One was because of the beach. It felt dirty because of the brown water, which I know was not the resort's fault, but because of that, everyone moved to this one small side of the beach, so it felt very overcrowded and claustrophobic. And one of the major reasons why I chose this resort was to have an alternative to the Granite Moon Palace that also has a terrible beach. So I was looking for a place that had a really nice beach and I was hoping to be able to sit on the beach and enjoy the blue turquoise waters that this area was known for. And the second thing was the price per night did not match the caliber of the resort. So if I was paying a budget price going to a budget resort, I have a much different mindset. You let a lot of things go you know what you're getting versus if you're paying a premium per night, you do expect a little bit more. So we did end up checking out and leaving and the staff was very understanding about it. We went back to the Sun Palace, which was actually less per night. And I know I may get some hate comments for this video because I was only there for a few hours, but this is not a review of this resort or am I telling you not to go to this resort? The point is that even after I did all of the research that I've done and I travel so much, I still picked a resort that really wasn't right for me. It really has been the whole goal of this channel. If I can prevent somebody else from making the same mistakes that I do, then the video is absolutely worth it. With that being said, we met these two families that were vacationing together and the children were having an absolute amazing time. They told me they would come back in a second. They had a kids club. There was lots for kids to do and they loved the food. They loved that it was all included and they were just having a blast. So I would love to hear your experiences. If you've been to the Grand Fiesta Americana Coral Beach, let us know your thoughts so that we can start the conversation in case people are trying to research whether or not to book this resort. And if you are new to our channel, Three Days and Trace Noches is not a travel vlog or a travel agency. We just bring you real honest, to the point, travel tips and reviews about the destinations that we go to and show you you don't need an entire week to have an amazing vacation. So please like and subscribe. And you can also find us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok.